Hey guys, and welcome to this video. So today we have a vintage 1977 Briggs 3 horsepower. A customer dropped it off yesterday. He said it's come off of his cylinder mower. And he said he's had a go at trying to get it running, but he's had no luck. And he asked if I'd take a look at it for him. So today we're going to be digging into it. I thought I'd bring you along, find out what's wrong with it. What's the first thing that jumps out at you when you look at this? For me, it's that new lock nut and that new main jet. And uh, they are not a wear item. They don't fail unless uh, they get damaged by over tightening or cross threading. So we'll have to have a dig into that. We'll have to make sure that there's nothing behind it or that the seat of the jet is broken or anything like that. The next thing that's caught my attention is this governor spring. Have a quick look between the fourth and fifth coils. You can see that they've been stretched. Also, each end of the spring has been modified and bent slightly. My advice to anyone working on springs like this is do not try and save them, replace them. You will chase your tail constantly and the chances are you're not gonna get it to run properly like that. This washer and spring should be to the right of that stop here and it's not. Essentially what happens is as you accelerate to full throttle, this arm will stretch the governor spring and it will come to uh, just over vertical. If you go beyond full throttle, what it will actually do is it will pull this choke on for your starting position. And then when you go back to its run position at full throttle, this should automatically bounce back. Well, because the spring's not under tension, that's not going to happen. So a quick look inside the tank now. I could be wrong, but it just looks like there has been some rust build up here in the past that's then been removed just by some of the marks that have been, been left. But uh, actually, it looks really, really good. So behind this governor spring, but in front of the carby, you have this throttle linkage and uh, it's been bent in multiple places. It's certainly not as sensitive as a bent spring. However, that will affect how the governor acts on over in this case, the butterfly back here. It might be fine. Uh, I'm gonna certainly try it first. I'm gonna try everything first, but it's just something else to bear in mind. So that's been snapped off. It's just one of the levers. What tends to happen is people go in here with a screwdriver when it gets a bit tight and that's broken. That's not a problem, but just again, something to bear in mind. The oil doesn't look bad at all. So we mentioned he couldn't get spark. So we'll just confirm that as well. Yeah, we've got zero spark and the kill switch is off. This is a 1977, so it's got points. So we'll dig into the points. There's metal shavings down there. I'll have to find out where they're from. Yeah, the threads have been wallowed out that side. We may put a new thread insert in there. We'll see. Right, we need to take off the screen. oil seal and uh, it's got oil and debris around it so I would suggest that that oil seal is starting to let some oil get by so that should be replaced we replace them in pairs so both sides should be replaced I'm going to take a note of all of this and I'm going to pass it on to the owner of the machine and just see where he wants to go with it this is all corrosion around here. So water has somehow at some point gotten in here or moisture, probably more likely just moisture ingress. Um, and it's not that surprising then that we haven't got the spark going on. Let's have a quick look at the points. Just want to see if they're stuck open or closed and they're not, they are closing and it looks like they're touching. Yeah. So this little plunger here, quickly you can see it, rides up and down on a flat spot that they've machined into the crankshaft and that's got some sort of corrosion on it as well. Not that that's metal, but that should have a little bit of lubrication on it to, to make sure it moves smoothly. Hopefully that's clear. 
there is a lot of gunk and dirt on that and it'll be the same on the uh, hammer so we call this the anvil and this side the hammer this is actually just the stub of the condenser so that's why most likely we're not getting spark but while we're in here we're going to test that condenser so the condenser this is such a delightful setup it's held in place with this this little screw and all you do is the points where you loosen that and you just slide that up to remove the points gap it's so simple yet it's so effective there is the it's actually the hot wire that comes out of the primary side of the coil that comes off and then our condenser will come off as well and of course there's corrosion on here which is going to cause us some issues as well we, we want to look to see if there's any bulging first and it doesn't seem to be so what I'm going to do is uh, clean this up and then we'll do the tests. So let's remove some of this crud first. And we'll just clean up the side of the condenser as well so we've got a good connection for the multimeter. I'll just throw up a bit of a safety warning here about capacitors. Capacitors are really dangerous. Now these small ones, they're not going to do much to you. They'll give you a zap and it hurts, but it's not the end of the world. However, as capacitors get larger, they uh, do pose the possibility of being able to kill you. People have taken microwaves apart and uh, it's led to their deaths because they fiddle with capacitors. So whenever you deal with a capacitor, make sure that you discharge it fully. To discharge this barrel style capacitor, you ground the top probe to the body. And if you have two prongs, you ground those to each other. So it's really simple, pop them together, hold it there for a few seconds and that will be fully discharged. This is a 220 nanofarad capacitor that is 0.22 microfarads. You have about, a I think it's a 10 to 15% fluctuation above or below that. Um, so we'll just start with checking the capacitance of it. Doesn't matter which probe goes where. So we've got 0.43 microfarads. That's uh, twice what it should be. That's way out of spec. Um, that doesn't mean that it's not going to work, but it's uh, not where it should be. So I will, because I haven't got another one on hand just now, we'll use this for testing it and seeing if we can get it running, but that will be replaced. The next thing we want to do is to charge this capacitor, make sure it takes a charge, make sure it discharges and does so fully, and also that it holds a charge. So let's charge it up first. This should take a few seconds. That's really slow. That should already be beyond the limit of the multimeter. So uh, it's not charging as it should. Let's just see what the voltage is. DC volts. All right, 200, 180. It's discharging okay. And we'll stop and hold at 100. We'll wait 10 seconds or so and see if it can hold that charge. And then when we connect it together, it should be back at 100. If it's dropped more, then again, that's an issue. So we should be around about the 100 millivolts. I see it's dropped as well. It shouldn't have dropped that low. It went to 70. And the last test is just checking that it fully discharges. So that's telling me that the capacitor, it's done. It, it's finished. It needs to be replaced. They've got a lip on them, which is going to mean that there's not a good connection to the anvil so that we'll get some sandpaper on that it's just where they've worn down and there is some life left in there but uh, i would suggest that uh, if we're replacing the capacitor we may as well replace the points as well these are old they uh, are worn i'll just have a quick look at this plunger this should come up and out it's a bit stiff oh. yeah so we can clean that up we're not going to replace that but it certainly needs to be cleaned. A bit of a clean. Yeah, there you go, look. All that old grease and oil. Which is not a bad thing, because it means that it would stop it from corroding, but it needs to be cleaned. It should clean up absolutely fine. Just check that there's no wear, that it's not chipped, it's not damaged. There we go. It should. Yeah, there you go. You see how it's moving really freely now? That's exactly what it should do. What 
just check it should have light drag on it a little bit loose no that's perfect we're leaving it there now when we close they're touching see that then when we open i lift the points up open some sandpaper Take all the debris out. A bit of dirt on there. It's probably quite hard for you to see, but uh, let's go again. Have a look on the other side. Much better. All right, good. We can get a multimeter on here. If we uh, take that wire off, we can check that they're actually closing. And it should be, it should get to zero. Yeah, I'll accept that. <laughs> Point one, <laughs> that, that, that zero in my mind. Now this little starter clutch is screeching. And I've noticed when I took it off, it doesn't want to go onto the uh, crankshaft itself. So it needs to be cleaned out. We'll give it a clean out and uh, clean up the crankshaft, clean up any small birds that might be on the inside of there. Put a bit of oil on the crankshaft, a little bit of oil on the felt pad inside, and I'm sure that there's gonna be a whole heap of dirt in there. You don't want grease, or really even any oils on these little ball bearings that are under here, because they will stick as well. So uh, let's do that next. There we go. There should be a number of balls in here. I can't remember how many. Six. Yeah, so you can see, if you look closely, you see all that grease and dirt in there? That's not what you want. There shouldn't be any grease on these balls or any oil or anything. They should be in there dry. Yeah. This doesn't seem to want to go on there nicely. So there's probably a bit of burr here, might be a bit of a burr there. So I'm gonna go clean that up with some carb cleaner, clean that out, and I'm gonna give that a bit of a sand too. That's it, we got it. Nice and smooth now, it goes on smooth and spins freely. It's exactly, exactly what we want. So it's all cleaned up now and uh, I filed off the uh, burrs that were formed. I'm not going to increase or deepen the groove just yet. Let's not fix something that's not broken. Right, so that goes on there. You have one ball bearing, make sure they're clean. There's no oil on them. Hopefully you can see how it works. They literally just catch a ball bearing and when they're not engaged, the ball bearings just pop up out of the way. That then goes on top. And it's all closed. And it's no longer going. <coughs> the only other thing we've got to do next is to put this little felt pad in, give it some oil and uh, oil the shaft, all inside there. Let's do that from the inside. And then this should slip on like butter, which it does. It's exactly what we want. You can see as it's compressing that felt pad, it's letting some oil out. That's completely normal. And when I give it back to the customer, this is all coming apart again. When I give it back to the customer, everything's going to be talked up correctly. But for just for now, I'm uh, happy with doing it like this. Cover goes back on. Make sure that's off. Hey, look at that. Beautiful spark. One more time. Boom. Couple of gentle cracks with the impact. Open. Cool, this time you ready?
So, diaphragm, we've got the spring, we have the gasket and diaphragm, so we're going to fit that. So we need to remove, take this and the jet out. And then inside, uh, look, that is a broken jet. Now, it could very well be that that's all it is. Look at this. I thought that, that could be the case. Someone's broken the jet in there. Oh, damn. Right, that's not a good start. <clears throat> that's why we weren't getting our fuel. Right, I'm gonna call the customer. All right, so I've just sent him a message, actually sent him the video of me taking that out so he could see it. See, that's not even, that's not a Briggs part. This is metric, and I tried to fit an Imperial in there and it didn't fit, so I came with the metric. That's cheap and chintzy. I think what they've done is this is all aftermarket. That's not original, just by feeling it, you can feel. And that, I, I would suggest that that's probably new too. So, I'm gonna wait to hear back from him, but while I'm here, it's not gonna hurt to see if we can get that little, so let me see if I can, can you see in there, it's not a, there's no light through it? That is the end of the jet. So if I can get a little needle in there and pop that out, in the unlikely event that I can then file this down, yes, it's going to take a different position, it's not gonna be one and a half turns out, but it, maybe we can, we'll see. No, maybe we'll get set up for this in a good light. This is not gonna work. Anyone that's been watching my channel for some time knows that I'm not a part swapper. I won't do it. I would rather take up more of my own time, not get paid for it, but achieve something and feel good for doing that job. So we're gonna see if we can tap this out. Oh gosh, that is in there tight, isn't it? Yep, we moved it. There we go, it's out. Is that really how it's meant to look? Maybe. Can it actually produce something like that? I highly doubt it. No, it doesn't just, it just doesn't look quite right to me, but I guess it is. I'm gonna get onto Google quick. I'm just gonna, you see, that doesn't even look right to me, but it must be. Right, back in a sec, I'm gonna find out what it looks like on Google. So I've had a closer look. That is not even the right needle for this model. And that is not, well, that I presume comes on there, but that's totally wrong as well. This should have no step here and it should be tapered from the images I can see from the part number I can find. So I'm presuming that in that case that jet is wrong as well. However, if I can, there's nothing to lose here, this is gonna, needs to go in the bin, but if I can machine this so I can put a taper on it, all I need to do is to try and limit the amount of fuel that the machine can get or at least give it a set amount of fuel. I'm going to try it anyway Nothing's to lose. That's already broken. I'm not going to break that. Um, we might as well try it. I'm going to see how we go. So let's see what we can do. Well, first of all, I'm going to try and get this chapped up. It's not going to be centre until I... Let's try that. Let's close that. Right, so we've got it centered in the chuck. I'm gonna go in with a file. Right, 
you've got a very fine taper on there. That doesn't mean that it's going to fit in the jet, but at least it's a start, right? Let's uh, leave it in there for now. I want to just go over with some sandpaper. Of course, this is all guesswork. Right now, I have no idea if this will even work, but we don't lose anything except my time. Looks smooth. Let's have a look. It might be amazing, it might be an absolute fail. Should be a spring under here and a little cap. That's it. That doesn't feel too bad. I'm going to chuck a new one on anyway. So we are back. This feels like plastic. That is plastic. It's plastic rather than metal. And you know what? I reckon that should probably have a seal on it or an O ring or something. Let's have a look. This is plastic, so. Overdo it. Nope, still compressing the spring. I'll see if I've got a smaller spring. So, all this spring is doing is applying. I, I could even cut it again. You buy these as kits, so I could even cut that. I don't want to cut too much off. I'll just see where it sits. Let's see before I cut that if I've got one that will work. Week. That fits nicely. A little O-ring. Let's see if this O-ring still fits. I'm not going to overdo it. Let's just try that. It's so easy to take apart. We'll just try it like that first. I can go back in there. <clears throat> Fill pump diaphragm. Governor spring needs to be fitted because that governor spring is shot. This diaphragm. Like that. That goes over there. The little cover goes on. There's no gasket on this. That's always kind of surprised me, actually. Nice. Okay, that's lovely. Right, let me go get the engine and we'll stick it back on. So you can see I've got an oil seal taken out here just for now. It's only going to be run for a you know, 30 seconds to a minute. I'll double check the oil level's good. And then we're going to put some sponge material. I'll cut out a bit of a strip. And I'm just going to feed it in there just to stop it spraying out. Because I want to just test this proof of concept. And then I've got the oil seals coming. They'll be in this afternoon. So we can replace the oil seals. We're going to put on an electronic ignition onto here as well. We'll take the points and condenser and all that out for him. And just give that to him. This is all bent and wrong here. It's not good. We'll see if it works, but it, it may have an impact on the way the engine runs, but we won't know until we've tried. Right, that comes off. You see that's all bent. Everything's been bent. Everything's been messed around with in here and it's not right. Okay, cleaned it up. So this is literally just an electronic ignition, and I want to give a shout out to Terrell Fixes All. I mean, not that he really needs a shout out, but I like to express my appreciation or show my appreciation where uh, appreciation is due. It was his video that inspired me to think, oh, have I got a, a good coil? And I do have good coil, so. Thank you, Terrell. I wouldn't have done this without, I, literally, I wouldn't have done this without him. So this is 100% a thank you to Terrell. Okay. 
Apologise for the wind, there's nothing I can do about that. So I've put a cable on. We're going to start with the screw all the way in. We're going to bottle feed it. And then we're going to start to turn it out until it catches. Well, that's the plan anyway. It sounds, sounds all good, but whether it actually works or not, I'm not sure. And whether I'm going to have enough hands to... Okay, so that's... That's full throttle. Let's try that. Let's try half throttle. Let's see what happens. I got no idea. I got no idea if this will even start. Okay. I tell you what, let's turn that throttle way off. full throttle not at idle. So my phone died literally as I was gonna turn that engine off, but it doesn't matter, it's great. The only issue is the governor spring is, well, the governor is running too fast and that's to do with the throttle linkage that was all bent. I thought it might be the case, Uh, so this governor spring, which is brand new, is perfect, actually links onto this. And again, someone's bent it when they've taken this engine apart in the past. And the problem with this is this length here to this hole determines how much tension is on the governor spring. And uh, thus, it's not going to be running correctly. If this is pulling a certain way more than the other, it will affect it. So what we need to do is to try and straighten that out and get that sorted, because it shouldn't be like that. And the reason why I'm hammering it is because it gives me a flat surface. I can bend it with pliers, but the problem with pliers is that tends, at least I find, to put kinks in it. So at least... Uh, this will give us, you can see already how much straighter and flatter that is. Whereas if I put pliers in there and try to bend it straight, I just don't have much success with it. That's much better, far better. Like that, that's now straight. 
the, the problem with this is it's a, is it quite the possibility that I'm actually going to break it because the metal's been bent a number of times. And I can heat it up to soften it. Hold that down, give it a tap. That should, there we go, you see how that's opened that up? Stop it from curving anymore. Hey, we got it. That is how it should look. Now, we might need to put a gentle curvature here just so that sits in place on the throttle linkage. But uh, let's go have a quick look at that. So I had to make one quick modification to this linkage here. I had to put a slight curve in it so that it wouldn't foul out on the housing. And now, it's, uh, it's actually perfect, really. That's idle and off. That's full throttle. And it's got free range of motion without getting caught or hooked up on anything. And also I had to bend this linkage up here as well. This was bent and it was actually catching on the air filter housing. So I've been able to put a gentle curve in there and get that back to how it should be. And now you can see it's movements linear. Whereas before it would come up and hit the housing and come down up and hit the housing. So there we go, that's how it should be. All right, now let's go and try it out. So that should be full choke, which it is. Uh, and on, so let's have a quick look. I should probably keep that nearby. just as it should. That is perfect. And, uh, it's running beautifully. It really is. I'm going to change the oil out now that it's nice and warm. Sorry about the crows. Anyway, hope you enjoyed the video and I'll catch you on the next one.